What's up guys? Welcome. I am Jen. Thanks for clicking on my video. I am going to try to do some home vlogging and filming of my little things I'm doing around the house. The last time I tried to put together a weekly vlog, the vlog ended up being things I did over the course of about three weeks. We'll see if this one turns out similarly. Right now it is President's Day weekend in the middle of February. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, is the holiday President's Day that we celebrate here. My school vacation week for my daughter is this week where we live in the Northeast. We typically have a February break and an April break, and this is the February school break coming up. So she's off from school all week. I have tomorrow, Monday, off as a holiday, and I'm taking a vacation day at the end of the week to give myself two long weekends, which is going to be great, awesome. So I'm basically milling around the house today, trying to catch up on laundry and cleaning. I am changing over some of the home decor in my house, taking all of the Valentine's Day tchotchkes and things I had out around the house, and I'm putting up my St. Patrick's Day stuff. So I'm going to be doing that. I just actually pulled some things out of my basement, and I have this little like wreath decor thing that I typically put on my front door, and I notice it's kind of dirty. Um, it does get dirty hanging on the front door and I, it looks like I put it away last winter after we had a storm or something and it kind of looks like it had gotten dirty. So I'm going to try to clean that up. These things are kind of old. Like I buy this stuff at like Michael's and Joann's and places like that. So I have two different ones. I have this one, which is like a long welcome sign. And then I have this one, which is more like a wreath. Um, I'm going to... This is the one that needs to be cleaned. It just looks like it has a little bit of dirt and weathering on it. Which one should I put up? I don't know. I think I might, um, this one looks kind of faded. Like this doesn't even really look green anymore. Look at the, look at the difference in color, huh? We'll see. And then I made myself some soup. I made a tomato tortellini soup recipe that I love. A nice comfort food for a winter day like today. It's been snowing here the past few days. We had a decent amount of snow a few days ago, and then yesterday we had another dusting of snow, so it's been pretty chilly out. I'm kind of hot in my house right now. I'm just wearing a t-shirt inside because I've been running around doing chores and things like that, so I got a little hot and took my sweatshirt off. But I'm just trying to stay cozy in the house. And I made another batch of Rice Krispie Treats. This is like my fifth batch of these. We only have a few left. And I did put the Valentine sprinkles on them again. I have been on a Rice Krispie Treats bender lately. This is probably the fifth or sixth batch I've made. Every time we finish one, I make another one. <laughs> I think I might be getting addicted to them at this point. <laughs> so follow along with me and let's see what I get into this week. Hey, I'm in my car. So I am heading out right now. I'm going to the grocery store. It's, uh, I just ended my work day. So I'm gonna go pick up some groceries and I'm going to get some takeout for my daughter and I for dinner tonight. I'm going to go to Raising Cane's, which is a chicken fast food place in my area, relatively new, opened up in my area. So not sure if some of you are familiar with Raising Cane's, if you've heard of it. It's a chicken fast food drive through place, kind of similar to like a Chick-fil-A or Popeyes or what have you. It's chicken and they have been expanding. They have been in certain regions of the country, but they're expanding a ton and they've opened up a bunch of new locations all over the place, including in my area. They just opened, I think a couple months ago, not even really sure when they opened. It might have been in December. I don't know. When they opened, it was so 
wildly popular that this place was opening that the car traffic to get in there was backed up to like the highway exit people were waiting in their cars in line in traffic to get into this place to try it so I didn't want to go during all of that craziness I waited I'm gonna try it tonight I'm gonna pick up some chicken for us to have for dinner their menus kind of limited they just basically have only a couple of menu items they don't have like tons and tons of options it's basically like chicken fingers and you can get it in just different increments and they have a chicken sandwich which isn't even a chicken breast on a sandwich it's I think literally the chicken fingers on a sandwich if I'm correct on that so I'm gonna get a meal or two for us to share and try it for dinner and then I'll report back later on on how we liked it Okay, here it is. Look at them. It's pretty cool looking. And it does have indoor seating. I wasn't sure if it did or not. Okay, I am super glad that I did not come here opening day or opening week because I can see how this was kind of tricky figuring out like the traffic pattern and like where to even get into here from the parking lot. So I feel um, I, I'm glad I'm doing this now as like a practice run so if I come here again I know where to go and where to park and this is kind of like a busy plaza with many entrances so you know blonde trying to go to drive through so this is what I mean when I say like limited menu like these are literally the options it's not a huge variety they don't have like burgers and hot dogs and mozzarella sticks and a ton of other things this is also I mean, a long wait a lot of cars here. There's two lanes open. This is pretty popular. Okay, so it's um, two lanes to order, but then everybody merges into one lane to pick up. Uh, which is fine. It's not super fast. So the one that I got was called the Caniac. And it's six pieces of chicken fingers. It comes with coleslaw, Texas toast, crinkle cut fries, and a beverage. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. 20 bucks this is costing. For my drink, I got the sweet tea. I wanted to see what that tasted like. Hello and good morning. It's a new day here. I'm not sure I ever checked back in and gave my official review on what I thought about the Raising Cane's food. So we just got one meal between my daughter and I to share. As I showed, their menu is basically just chicken fingers that you can buy in different increments. There's not a ton of variety on the menu. It's basically just like the size of the meal and how much food you want. I bet that's basically like the variations in the menu. And I don't know if I pointed this out either, but they do have like, uh, I think they call it like tailgate orders where you can like buy uh, larger quantities for like if you're having a party or something like that, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. So overall, we really liked it. I thought it was good. My daughter really likes Popeyes. You know, we've been to all the other chicken places before. I have to say, I thought this was good. And I liked it a lot better than sometimes you go through drive through chicken and it's really hard and crunchy and crispy. And I don't like that kind because it hurts the roof of my mouth. This was soft. It was good. It wasn't like, oh my God, I'm blown away. This is the best chicken I've ever had. But I thought it was good. I would definitely get it again. So we're back to the daily grind today. Last week was school vacation week here where we live. Now oh, it's back to school, back to work this week. I'm making myself an iced coffee at home. I posted this in another video, but we got, we, 
my daughter <laughs> got a coffee machine for Christmas and I have been so enjoying making my own coffee at home. It has a setting to make a cappuccino so I make myself homemade macchiatos and they come out so good. I'm actually going to show right now how I do it. Okay, so I'm going to use my nice little Amazon cups that I love, these little glass cups. So I use the setting on the coffee machine. Um, see if I can get it to come on. Okay, I see that it's a little dusty. Um, so I have it set to the specialty four ounce, and then I press the button, and I got it to brew, and I brew my little cappuccino size coffee right into a regular coffee mug. Don't mind the peanuts. My daughter got Texas Roadhouse takeout the other night. Don't you hate that they give these out in bags now? I mean, I guess it's cool because you can take them home, but I miss the pails like they used to do. So I'm putting about four ice cubes in here, and then I'm going to do four pumps of this classic caramel. Is that four? Classic caramel syrup that I bought on Amazon. Maybe one more. Okay, I had to reposition there. Uh, then I'm going to use my frother here on the side of the coffee machine and I'm going to froth about four ounces of milk. Right now I'm using almond milk. Just because I have it on hand, I do sometimes make these with regular 2% milk. I don't know how long you're supposed to do this. looks good. Um, this is kind of a lot. So then I'm pouring the milk on there over the ice. Then I pour the coffee in. I'm barely gonna fit here. Perfect. Put my lid on. Ah. <laughs> you better believe I'm drinking that off the top. <laughs> then I have my Starbucks straws that I save and reuse. And look at that. Come on. Beautiful. Hey, what's up? It's a new day. Do not look at my dining room table behind me. My house is a mess right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to make myself some lunch. I'm going to make myself... Uh, a little salad. I don't really have like a ton of salad ingredients. I just have some baby butter leaf lettuce and some cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna put that together. Probably add some of these uh, chow mein noodles on top and I think I have some shredded carrots in the fridge. So um, kind of like a little makeshift salad with whatever I have on hand. That'll be my lunch. Um, did anyone else like have these as a kid growing up? My mom, when I was a kid, used to make this meal. I guess she just called it chow mein. And it was basically the chow mein noodles in a can, separate thing. It's like chow mein vegetables and ground beef and then these on top. That, that was like such a good meal. I should buy those and make that. That would be really good. Uh, I'm also making another batch of Rice Krispie Treats. <laughs> I've made... I've been on such a Rice Krispie Treat kick lately, it's not even funny. Every time, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> Every time I go to the supermarket, I buy another bag of marshmallows and another box of Rice Krispies. Uh, I just eat them all the time. My daughter really likes them. She takes them with her in the morning, like on the go. Uh, it's kind of like a breakfast food. Um, it's kind of like a dessert snack. Uh, <sighs> And I have figured out that this is the best um, ingredient. So Jet Puffed, the brand name, no store brands, and it has to be the large ones, not the minis. They, I don't know why when I make them that way, with that, they come out better. When I use the minis, they don't come out as good. When I use a store brand, they don't come out as good. So from now on, I am only making them ever with the large Jet Puff brand. 
And for this batch, I'm going to use some different sprinkle decorations. I mentioned this in a previous video. When I make Rice Krispie treats, I usually will like put little like cupcake cake decorations on top of them. I just sprinkle them on and like pat them down to stick with a spatula while the Rice Krispie mixture is still hot when I first put it in the pan. So I've been using this Valentine's Day one up and making a lot of them with the pink and red sprinkles in the next set that I do I'm going to use these which I don't even know if you can see these real well but they're like little shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day and I got these at Michael's so Michael's has really great um, cake cupcake decoration sprinkles like lots of really cool designs so I like to put those on I'll put a picture of those in when I actually make that batch and I keep all of my cake decoration sprinkle things in this container that I bought at Target. Uh, it's kind of like a weird shape, but I needed it to fit in my pantry, which is tall and narrow. And um, these all fit in here. Mostly Christmas designs and stuff, but um, I like to have them for different occasions. And I'll show my salad that I made. Here's my deep thought of the day. Is I am... I have decided to delete the last dating app that I have from my phone, online dating app, website, account, profile, whatever you call it. And it's Bumble, and the last, that's the only one I have active now is Bumble. Uh, and I'm just going to delete it. I think I'm going to delete my profile, unjoin, whatever you call it and um, delete it from my phone and I'm going to be done. This is a decision, decision I made. Um, yeah, Bumble is the only one I'm on right now. I've been using Bumble for a couple of years. Actually, one of my high school friends, who a guy friend who got divorced, uh, recommended, <laughs> recommended Bumble to me when we were talking about being divorced and dating. Uh, I get together with my high school friends like once a year. And, um, anyway, so I was like, oh, all right, I'll try it. I, I actually, I think Bumble's okay. It's the one where the woman has to speak first. Like, the, in, the contact, the, to initiate contact, it has to be, uh, it has to be done by the woman. So, once you match, you have 24 hours to message the guy. And if you don't message him within 24 hours, the match expires. But you, female woman, have to be the one to message first. Even if you match with them. Like, the guy has to wait to hear from you. So, what are my reasons? Why am I doing this? I do have this for my salad. Um, so, I've been divorced for like 11 years. Coming up on 11 years this month, next month, March, uh, that it's official since my divorce was final. And, um, you know, sometimes I get kind of down on myself about like, why am I still single after all these many years? And, you know, I'm not going to make this video like a therapy session or anything like that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, my ex-husband is remarried. A lot of my friends that have gotten divorced, they got divorced after me are remarried or they have like new, boyfriends, uh, significant others, new relationships, whatever. And I, I don't, and I, sometimes I get down on myself about that. Going to add some shredded cheese, cheddar jack to my salad. So yeah, I mean, I just feel like I spend sometimes a lot of energy and bandwidth in my brain thinking about this and overanalyzing and wondering what I'm doing wrong and like why it doesn't work out, whatever, you know, and um, I just kind of want to like, you know, just not think about it. I just want to, I want to kind of be done with it. I think I'm ready to be done. Um, so basically there's like two things that have kind of like put me over the edge as far as like online dating. I mean, first of all, like I just don't think it's a great platform in general. I don't think, for me. You know, a lot of people meet their significant other that way. A lot of people met their husband that way. You know, online dating's been around for a long time now. Like, I think Match.com is over 20 years old at this point. 
But like for me, it just hasn't worked out as a platform. I feel like the you know I'm not able to like form a really good connection uh, with somebody online through texting and. I, I don't put a ton of effort into it, honestly. I mean, I think like in theory I want to date in my mind, but then when it comes down to actually doing it, I, act, I obviously I don't because I don't. I don't put the effort in. I don't um, have like patience for it. And, um, and basically like what, like I said, what drove me over the edge is that I've been on these apps for a long time and um, just in the past year, maybe year and a half, there has been this serious uptick in married men on there looking to screw around or have open relationships and there's this new concept and like, I'm sorry if this is like scaring people. If you're married, you're probably horrified. Like this sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, it, it can be. And um, there's this new concept. I don't know if a lot of people have heard about this. If you're happily married, you, I'm sure you have not, but it's called ENM, ethical non-monogamy. Sometimes called CNM, consensual non-monogamy, but it's basically like what, what they're saying. It's an open relationship. You're saying non-monogamy and ethical because your spouse knows about it. So this could be a dude that wants to have uh, some extra partners outside of his wife, or it could be a husband and wife that like want to mess around with a third person. The, I'm, I, this sounds horrific, but this is real. This does exist. And they will put this in their profile and be like completely out in the open and public about it. So it used to be like you would see one of these like once in a blue moon, like a guy like trying to screw around and mess around. And I feel like it's so common now. Like I see profiles, men's profiles that have this in them all the time, like literally every week, polyamorous, poly, ENM, whatever. They put it in their profile. As soon as I see that, that's an auto no for me. And I just kind of feel like stop screwing around, you know, like I feel such a righteous indignation when people are doing that because it's like, from my point of view, it's like you already found somebody, you already met someone, like you did it. You met your wife, you met her, you liked her, she liked you, you liked each other. Your relationship was like mutual, right? I mean, it was reciprocated. You agreed to get married. You, you like you did it, you won, right? You achieved it. And that's not good enough for you? You want to screw around and mess around and, and be poly and open at e and m I mean, it's so greedy and selfish. And like, let other people date. You know, get out of here. Leave. What are you doing here? You're cluttering up space. You're taking up space that an actual single person who is open and receptive to being in a relationship could be taking up that spot. But you're here and you're already married. So I just feel like I get so angry about it. Like, anyway, and this is what I'm saying. So I don't want to feel, I don't want to see this. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to get angry about it. I don't want to be bitter about it. Like, I just want to get away from this and that's why I'm deleting it. I just think it's not serving me well. It's not bringing anything positive to my life. Becky Higgins once said, does blank, insert whatever here, help me to cultivate the feeling that I want in my life? So does being on these dating apps help me cultivate the feeling that I want in my life? The answer to that is no. So I'm out. For, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> Are these apps bringing a positive feeling into my life? Or am I cultivating the feeling I want? Am I cultivating the life I want? Are they bringing anything positive, net positive to me? No. They're making me upset. They're making me sad. <laughs> They're giving me bad thoughts and bad feelings. So it's, it's just like something I have to do is just to walk away from it. You know, I'm not saying I'm opposed to dating completely. If I meet somebody in real life, in a natural organic way you know and if so be it if that happens I mean I hope that happens I still hope that that happens you know but I'm not gonna be on these apps I'm not I'm not doing this anymore you know I've spent too much bandwidth and energy over the years and it's honestly just given me such a negative vibe it's actually all these like married men out there doing the, the poly ENM stuff it's making me like feel negative towards men in general and like uh I'm disgusted with them. It's making me like hate men, which I don't, I don't want, you know, I, I mean, ugh. 
I'm telling you guys, like, married women, just, like, seriously, <laughs> be glad you're married. Go home, give your husband a nice little hug and kiss because, like, it is a complete nightmare to be single. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and now I'll show my salad that I made. I have to pick out what kind of dressing I'm having. There it is. There's my salad. Uh, so I have a balsamic vinaigrette and I have a sun-dried tomato and basil. I think I'll do, they're both kind of low. I'd like to just like use this up. I think I will use the sun-dried tomato and basil. And there's my lunch. Okay, what's up? It's a new day again. It is Saturday. It's the weekend. I'm out and about doing errands, getting a lot of things accomplished, which is really great. I had a ton of things to do this weekend. One of them was going to the appliance store. I need new appliances for my kitchen. And um, I actually went to the appliance store a couple of weeks ago thinking I'm just gonna go in and like buy this stuff and like get this taken care of but they had all these questions for me like do you have this do you have that and blah 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 and I didn't know the answer to any of the questions so I had to go home do my research find out like a little bit more information about what I even wanted and um, then I went back today and ordered everything I actually meant to like film in the appliance store I was gonna like take pictures of the appliances that I'm ordering but once I got in there uh, I totally forgot about taking pictures of anything and I just kind of was focused on talking to the salespeople and on the purchase so I'm getting a new dishwasher and a new gas stove range and a new over the stove microwave and I just got a new fridge last year so that was last summer last fall I don't even remember but now with the addition of these new three pieces, I will have entirely new appliances in my kitchen and no more of the old appliances that were in my house when I moved into it. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, it's gonna be nice to have all new appliances. Some of my appliances are white and I'm getting stainless steel. So that's, uh, that's gonna look great. That's gonna really make a big difference. It's gonna look a lot better. And uh, the funny thing about my dishwasher is my dishwasher stopped working during the pandemic so like in 2020 like it broke and just, just didn't work anymore and at the time you know it was like stores were closed and people weren't going anywhere and stuff like that and I remember thinking like I'll get a new dishwasher when this all dies down and like you know everything goes back to normal and um, you know prices are normal and like things are in stock and you know things were like crazy back then if you if you can remember <laughs> So then I just started washing my own dishes and it really wasn't that hard. I mean, it's the dishwasher is the kind of thing you can easily live without and really like doesn't affect your life too much. Obviously, you can't live without a fridge or a stove, but a dishwasher, I just started doing all my dishes by hand and I really didn't mind doing it. Uh, and years have gone by, obviously now I haven't had a dishwasher for years, literally years. And just in the past month or so, I was kind of thinking like, kind of sick of washing my dishes. And there's this whole system I have to like washing them and letting them dry on the counter and putting them away. And I'm sick of seeing them sitting on my counter. And I was thinking this would be a lot easier if I could just stick everything in a dishwasher. <laughs> So what's stopping me, right? So I, I finally did go and order them and they're being delivered uh, in a couple of weeks. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and then after that, I just did a couple other errands in the area. I just stopped by the store where I buy my compression sleeves and my compression gloves to get a couple new ones of those. Those have to be replaced every few months. And that's about it. I'm actually gonna check my little to-do list here in my planner and just see what else I want to be doing while I'm out before I go home and realize there was more stuff I wanted to do. So let's see. Um, things I want to do on Saturday. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I did that. Vacuum carved, did that. 
Um, I see that I wrote find a dry cleaner. I don't know why I wrote that down. I don't remember what it was I wanted to dry clean. Um, oh, go to chiropractor. Yeah, I didn't do that. Okay, there were some things I wanted to order. Did that. Amazon orders. Um, go to appliance store. Did that. Great. So great. Oh, I see I wrote down I want to buy plants too. It's getting to be that time of year. If I want to do seed starters or start growing anything inside my house, this would be the time of year to start doing that. I don't have my seeds or any seed starters yet. That might be something I can do. And do taxes is on here too, which I did my taxes already. That's great. So this is good. I love being able to check things off my to-do list and feel like I'm accomplishing stuff on the weekends. Coming up is my in-office week at my job, so I'm not going to have a lot of time this week to devote towards errands and tasks and things like that. So I'm trying to get as much done as I can this weekend. I want to do a big grocery shopping and start planning out my meals for the week so that when I get home from work, I know what I'm cooking for dinner every night for my daughter and I. So just trying to stay on top of things and stay organized. But anyway, I think I'm going to close out the vlog here. Thanks for following along with me on all the different things I have been up to over the past couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed watching this and seeing what's up in my day-to-day -day life, such as it is. <laughs> if you like these videos, please give it a like. And if you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you add me to your subscription list. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.